All right, so here's the command injection ones, which I think is another one pretty simple, uh, almost as simple as uh, pass traversal. And this is the one that we exploited in large language models, where data that comes from the user is misunderstood as commands that came from the developer. So let me launch the lab. Okay, this contains a command injection vulnerability in the product stock checker. It executes a shell command containing user supplied product and store IDs and returns the raw output from the command in its response. So let's see if we can understand how that works. So here is a page and um, I think it's under view details. So here's some kind of robot home security buddy. And here, check stock. It's this check stock request that contains the vulnerability. So again, I know that's where it's going to be. So I'm going to go back here to the proxy and clear all this old stuff. How do you clear the old stuff? You right-click, clear history. I do that again. You right-click anywhere up here and clear history and say yes. And that gets rid of all the past. Now you can make a request like this. And, uh, okay, loaded 32 units. And now I see the traffic that did that. So here it did a post for product stock and then some YouTube stuff. Oh, here's the request there. So when it did a post, it um, sent data. Here's the data. Product ID is two and store ID equals one. Then the response is 32. So it ran a script using those parameters. And the uh, what they say is there's a command injection here. So if I go to the repeater, um, what's going on here, let me open a text file I can type into here. All right. So what's going on is it's executing some kind of command on the back end, which is something like uh, count units, um, from like product ID equals two and store ID equals one. It's executing a command line command like that. And the result is the number of units. I don't know the name of this script, but it's something like that. And the point is, if they actually pass that to the command shell of a Unix server, then you can add a second command on the line of Unix server. And if you haven't seen this, let me point this out. If I open a Unix terminal, which this Mac is for all practical purposes, I can do say, um, ls and it shows my list of files let's do something that has less let's uh, to do clear let's do id there we are if i do id it tells me who i am and if i do who am i it gives me a different response of who i am and you can do two commands on the same line i can do who am i semicolon id and it will do both of those commands so if i have a command that does something like ping minus c1 this will do one ping of a website. And so a developer often writes a script that takes, you can test your networking on your router by going to a web page, and it lets the user control this part of it, and then it puts it in a command. And the user can put in the name of a website that includes a semicolon, who am I? So I put in data like that, which is then used to construct a command line command. And because the developer didn't think of this, I get the ability to inject commands. That's what's happened here. I'm only supposed to control these parameters, two and one, but they thought those parameters are being filled in by the web page and not under my control because the developer didn't think I would use burp. Since I'm using burp, I can take this thing that's supposed to be a number and I can put semicolon ID. And I can put one here too semicolon ID, and I don't know which one's going to work. Let's see what this does. Now the response includes two IEs, so both of those are vulnerable. So now I have executed a command on the server. I'm only supposed to be a customer sending up data, but I'm able to now execute commands on the server. And so this is command injection. I've gained control of the server as if I was a, a, an administrator of the server when I was just supposed to be a customer. So that's command injection. And just like the um, directory traversal we saw, there are defenses that come up to stop this. And the further labs here will probably be the same thing uh, with more defenses. So let's see, here's blind. See that one, 
this was act in this particular case, I was able to send a command and I was able to see the response from my command, which is nice, but often you don't get that. Often you give it data, it's used in a command, but the output of that command is not sent back to you. So this is how you handle that common problem. Um, this one has command injection, but it's blind command injection, which means I can send commands that will be executed, but I cannot see the output. However, I can still tell that my commands are being executed by using commands that create delays. So here uh, in the feedback function, it executes a shell command. So first let's find the feedback function, um, submit feedback. Okay, that's it there. So again, I'm gonna clean off the old stuff in the BERT proxy, because I don't care about that. Clear history, yes. And now I'm gonna hit the feedback function. Okay, and I've got a name, an email, and a subject, and a message. Okay, now I submit feedback. Okay, thank you for submitting feedback. So now I can see this loaded the form. This is the submit that sent the data up. That is a get request. Oh, this is probably submit down here. Okay, that's what it looks like. Well, right, and here's the request. Okay, so this is the form that requested feedback and here it is passing data up there. Okay, so they say there's a command injection in one of these fields. Now, I could try them one by one till I find it, but I think for purposes of here, I'm just going to read their um, instructions to make it fast. So let's get back to the instructions here. Okay, so solution is modify the email parameter to have this in it. Okay, so let's try that. Use that for an email, and you'll see if I go to my burp repeater, here. Here's my feedback command. Now notice if I send, right now there's nothing in the response because I haven't sent it yet. So when I send it, we'll just see how long it takes. One, two, two seconds, and I get a response. Okay. But if I change the email here, get rid of the email I put in and put in this stuff. Now the email is X, and I have two pipe commands, which is another way to add a second command. And then I have a ping, 10 pings to the loopback address. So if it executes that command, it's going to take 10 seconds to do that. So even though I don't see the output, I can send it and just count out the time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there. It took nine seconds now by my count. And so I know that it was executing that slow ping command, even though I can't see the result. So this is an important technique um, for all kinds of injections, command injection and SQL injection, how you can tell if you have a vulnerability, even when you don't see the result. All right. And that's, uh, all right, that's enough of that. I think get you folks started. I'm going to stop this one.